Hi, I'm going to do a very quick demo here of the change data capture within SQL Server 2008 and 2012. And uh, what that is basically is it'll, uh, d depending on which table you choose, it'll actually track the changes that are in the log file and put it in a table uh, under the CDC schema. So uh, I'm going to run a couple of commands here and show you the results of it. The first thing I have to do is uh, change the owner to SA. Then I'm going to have to enable my database for CDC. And after I've done that, you'll notice if I run the query for, for whether I'm tracking any tables, it'll come back as nothing because I'm not tracking any tables yet. So let me go ahead and enable that. And the table I'm going to enable is uh, within the AdventureWorks database. I am going to enable the person schema address table, which is the table I've highlighted here. So you'll notice in the parameters I put in person schema address, uh, role is null, and you'll notice the capture instance, that's very important. I'm leaving it here as null. So what that is, is that's the table name, that's the new table name of the CDC table that's going to be created to hold all your changes and when I leave this null by default it's gonna append person the schema underscore address underscore the CT it, it always has the CT um, so that's what happens when you leave the capture instance to null and then you you want to do net changes which is uh, if, if the column changes frequently it'll only do the net change of the last one not all of the changes. So you have thousands of changes in that one column. It's only going to reflect that uh, row once versus multiple rows um, within that interval that it's counting. Um, the other parameters is the column list and then the file group. So I'm just going to run this. And you'll, you'll notice it's taking a while. And the reason why it's taking a while is because it's actually creating SQL Server jobs. So it created these two jobs to capture the table data from the log file and actually to do the cleanup. So by default, I believe it actually keeps three days of data or one day of data. Um, so now that I've had that table enabled, if I query for which change tables, CDC tables are enabled, you'll see now I have this capture instance which is person underscore address so let, let me actually disable that instance and, and I want to show you what happens if I explicitly name it so by default because I put null here it's named person underscore address so I'm going to disable that table and you'll notice if I go back and query for it it's not there anymore and I'm gonna switch over to this one where I explicitly just name it address and nothing else so now when I query for it again you notice the instance is just address now all of the CDC tables are suffixed with underscore CT and that's how you have to query it you have to do a select all from CDC table uh, CDC schema dot and then your instance name and then underscore CT so that's your instance name the parameter you passed in here and then it's always prefixed by underscore CT so if I query for that there's actually nothing in my change table because I didn't change that table um, but let me delete that because I do want it prefixed with the schema so let me delete that table and create this one with the person underscore address which is what I want so when I query it again now you'll see it's person underscore address and let me start doing some changes so if if I insert into that table this address I'm, I'm going to insert uh, into that address table 188 football Ave suite 188 Seattle Colorado 80230 
zero. So I'm gonna do an insert, and then I'm gonna select the ID, and then I'm gonna do an update. So I'm gonna update that address to 199 Football Ave instead of 188. And then I'm gonna do a delete on it. So now I should have four rows. And the reason why I have four rows, let me pull up the rows now. So if I do a query here, you'll notice I have four rows. And it's because the first operation here is the insert. The second operation here is actually the update before values, or, or the update after values, let's see. Yeah, it's the update after values is the four, and then the updates before. And then that's the three, that's the before. So you'll notice 188 is what I had before, and then 199 av is what I have after. Yep. And um, okay, so I have it in reverse. One is actually the delete, so this is what I deleted, which makes more sense here, um, because I initially started out with the two, which is the insert, and then this is the before, this is the after, and this is the uh, delete here. Yeah, one is delete, and that's because I did order it descending. So I have here what, what you'll notice here is um, in my original setup here where I enable the table, I only chose to track the three tables, uh, the three columns that are changed. That, that does not mean that if I don't change, like if I change line two, it'll still appear in this table. I'm just not tracking that column. So um, you'll notice every CDC table has five columns here. And the first one is actually the unique transaction number. So you'll notice in this update, these two are part of the same transaction. And then furthermore, you'll see there's uh, the operations. And this happened at the same time, otherwise, um, this would be sequential depending on whether it's in if you had multiple statements and they were in the same transaction this would be ordered and then the update mask of what column actually changed so those are the five columns that you see and again this is the operations and I'm gonna cut and paste this whole thing so you can execute it yourself uh, in the description area. So that's basically a demo of the CDC uh, from start to end. And it's, it's important to note that it does create these two SQL agents. So what's happening behind the scenes, if you look at the documentation, is that this gear here is your SQL agent. So it's capturing all of that from the log file and redirecting and putting it into the change tables. So these up here are your original tables. It goes into the log when you make changes. The change capture uh, SQL agent captures those changes and moves it into the CDC. So there is a latency there um, because the SQL agent has to run. Um, so that's good to know, but you, you could read all of this. I'm going to put all the links here. I understand that a lot of people just want to see the demo and what it is, which is uh, why I wanted to do this quickly up front here. Um, so the, the other thing I wanted to mention is you have to run your SQL Server and SQL Agent on an account other than network service. If you run it as network service, this will fail. Um, so make sure to have SQL Server and SQL Agent running as some other account. Um, you know, lots of times in dev, we tend to do uh, the administrator accounts. Um, and also to have your SQL Server agent running. Um, so that's pretty important. 
The other important thing to note is you need you, you can only do two capture instances per table, um, and be aware of how long it's capturing the data. So I notice on the cleanup it runs it runs every day, and um, I believe I read somewhere the default is it keeps data for three days, so it's like a roll rolling window there. Um, but I think that's about it. So uh, it does track changes from the log file, which is very convenient for querying. So that's what it's meant to be for. Um, and I hope that helps you in your situation. Uh, thank you.